everyone. Hey, it's Andrew here with Sony, Central Regional Product Specialist for the Custom Channel. And today I want to take you through a quick walkthrough of Oversee and how that integrates with Sony ESAVRs. But before we can get to Oversee, we do need to make a couple of uh, uh, key settings in the uh, Sony ESAVR to make sure we're ready for control. So let's jump over to the receiver's on-screen menu and look at how to set up this AZ-1000ES. So from our home menu here, we have all of our, our standard options, uh, our watch, listen, custom presets, sound effects, zone controls, all that good stuff. But before we get there, let's go into our setup. Now I am using our on-screen GUI, uh, but you can also do this uh, from your web uh, uh, GUI and your browser uh, once you have your IP address, or you could even do this on the front panel of the larger 3000, 5000, 7000 series receivers. But the very first thing we need to do before we can do any of this here is we need to enable external control. We do care about your network security at Sony, so we want to make sure that this is uh, something that does have to be enabled. So uh, external control is turned off by default. Uh, turning external control on allows us access for IP control. It allows us our uh, casting capability uh, and allows the receiver to be woken up from uh, those external devices. And of course, it also allows us integration with Oversee. So once I have the, uh, the receiver on for external control, I just need to get my MAC ID address and my IP address. Now, if you're running hardwired, which really is the best way to run these, we can just go to our network settings and check out our network connection status. So this will tell me, of course, we're hardwired. I have an IP address. I have a MAC ID address. Uh, so I am ready to roll. All right, so I'm logged into the receiver, I'm logged into my Oversee portal, and now I can see all of my compatible devices. Of course, this is gonna include the Sony ES AVRs, uh, Sony ES projectors, and also Sony uh, televisions as well. Uh, but uh, when we look at all of my setup here, I do, have, I do want to mention I am running Arachnus uh, network components. Uh, their router switch, all of their components are fully Oversee compatible and have Oversee Pro built in. So a great option to, uh, to get this up and running. But of course, there's a variety of ways that you can get to this point. Now to add the receiver to the network, we can do it one of two ways. I can go here to manually add the device uh, where I can punch in the MAC ID address here or I can also scan the network and it will search and it will find all of the compatible devices on the network. So again, even if you don't go through and pull up that, uh, that MAC ID address and IP address, as long as the receiver is on and on the network, uh, it's going to discover it right here. Uh, so I can look through my list of components here. I've already, you know, it's my living room uh, uh, receiver, uh, but there is my uh, AVR 047 BCBE. What is that one? Well, let's rename this. Let's make this a little bit easier to, uh, to understand. Uh, so I will change uh, this right here since this is in my office uh, and it is an AZ-1000ES. We'll just change the name there and save. So from this point, um, you know, it's really pretty straightforward. I can see uh, the device details, that MAC ID, the, uh, the, the IP address, you know, when it's checked in on the network and making sure that we're all online. Now, here's the best part. If I go right up here to the top, you will see this little uh, uh, pop-out box here. That is our web connect. So when I click on the web connect here, it'll give me a couple of different ways we can go. Uh, of course, make sure you get your permission from your client uh, to have the web connect and remote access enabled. Uh, but I can click right here to connect to the receiver. Now, I, this will pop up in a new window and this will allow me to connect to my receiver from anywhere. Um, I can then see going right into the web GUI, have all of the control exactly as if I was on site. Uh, we can then go down and we say we do want to update the firmware on the, uh, the receiver. I can scroll all the way down here to the bottom to my firmware update and I can actually push a firmware update to the receiver uh, from my office to a remotely located receiver. But let's go back to that network setting because I want to show you one other real quick thing we can do here on the network side is it does have also our ability to adjust any of our works with Sonos connections. 
Uh, so say something changed on the Sonos, they added a new device, you know, we need to, uh, we need to do anything here. Um, I can see all of my connected Sonos devices, uh, which I do only have one at the moment, so it's only listing the one, uh, what input it's connected to, and of course that real key for making uh, uh, works with Sonos uh, really exceptional is we set a preset level. So I'm gonna set a maximum level that I'll ever listen to Sonos, so it's gonna go right to that level. Even better, nobody's on site, you need to make sure the TV is actually connected. Under our HDMI settings, if we scroll down here to the bottom, it's going to tell you if you're connected to a monitor and what resolutions and capabilities that monitor has. So at least some basic heated information to, uh, to give you some good feedback and let you know if you're connected or not. Again, under the, uh, the install settings, we have the ability to save a profile. So I would recommend doing this with any system, whether you're using over C or not, but go through and save that profile. You can save that to a USB drive. You can save it to your desktop. You can save it to a customer file. Uh, so it's going to save my, uh, my profile uh, right here to my, my PC. And then I can actually remotely load this profile. I can click right here to choose that file and then to load that file remotely. So again, all of this information can be pushed. And then once you've done that, boy, make sure you go back in and lock the receiver out uh, so that uh, the, uh, nobody's gonna be able to get back in and change those settings. So what do we think of that? In just a couple of minutes, I was able to go into my AZ-1000ES, make sure it was on the network, enable external control, and then jump over to that oversee portal and do all of my setup, uh, be able to get that remote uh, remote access, uh, be able to make sure that all of my, uh, my inputs and outputs are up and running properly. Really great capabilities here with the integration of Sony ES and Oversee. So I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned to the channel for more helpful videos. Thanks everyone. Bye.